Hey guys, what is going on? Like me and one, two, three, I'm back with another video and welcome to another Tillis thing making video where in this final episode I'll be ranking my favourite The Legend of Korra Season 4 Book 4 Balance episodes. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off at episode 1, we have after all these years and this is the members of Team Avatar, so Asami, Marco, and Bolin move on with their lives because in the first sort of recap of the episode, we get like a whole sort of history of the three years past. So it was really cool instead of just like happening straight after season three, we actually got this pretty big time gap of three years. So it's really cool to actually see that because the whole of Republic City is sort of revolve evolved in a way because they were now living with the spirits, but like the spirit vines sort of were growing in an, inc un an unincontrollable rate and all that. So it was definitely really interesting to see that. And then Kai and Opal, who are like, I wouldn't say masters of airbending, but like really good at airbending, not as good as like Tenzin and his children. So they've sort of mastered, but not as good as like Tenzin and his children. I also really like how instead of just having like the traditional clothing of airbenders, they sort of have these new sort of clothes for airbenders. I really do like the design for them and like how you can actually use like your arm to actually like sort of airbend fly is definitely really cool and they do help a struggling Earth Kingdom town. So for the first episode, I thought it was definitely pretty good but I'm not gonna put it in perfect because there could have been some sort of changes to the episode. So now moving on to Korra alone, I'm just going to put it straight up in perfect. Now it was definitely a pretty dark episode, definitely a lot was pretty serious about it and just like seeing the episode you were, you were thinking, is this really a kid's show? Because there was definitely a lot of stuff in this and this was Korra's three year journey of healing because after the events of season three, she is still impacted by the poison what Zaheer did put in her and to actually see her go on this journey of healing it definitely does take her to some unexpected places definitely a lot did happen in this episode like she was became a fighter at like this sort of wrestling sort of a arena so it's definitely interesting with that she actually was in the southern north no the southern water tribe for like a couple of maybe days because like she was struggling to sleep because she would always have like visions or like dreams of Zaheer and all that and then like she actually went sailing and she was actually going to go up go back to Republic City but she turned around so that was definitely pretty interesting because we learned from her father that Cora's been in Republic City for I think like three months but then we the audience know she's not actually there, so I really like that whole sort of mystery side, but this episode was definitely perfect. Then in episode 3, we have the coronation, and this is when Prince Wu, who is the sort of heir to the throne in Ba Sing Se, his day of being cor coronated as like the king, I think, or prince, I'm not 100% sure, his day is actually ruined by Kavira, because she has this whole sort of speech about bringing all the earth kingdoms or like sort of earth land all together in like one thing. So I really like that speech because she definitely did sound pretty confident and everyone actually did sort of stand up and clap to her. So it's definitely pretty interesting. And then Cora thinks that she might have found the key to her full recovery. So that was definitely pretty interesting to know about that. So I might possibly put this episode maybe into second position in Amazing. Next we have the calling, and this is when Tenzin tasked Janora, Iki, and Milo to a, an important mission to find Korra, and I thought it was definitely really cool how we got this sort of episode with those three, because we really hadn't got like a dedicated sort of moment or episode with those three for a while, so it was definitely really cool to see that, and they have all, I wouldn't say all grown up, because Milo is still definitely the funny one, but it was really cool to actually see them sort of mature a bit, and Janora take charge to her younger brother and sister and I really liked how they did travel over I think it was like maybe Ba Sing Se but I don't think they went that far but it was really cool to actually see them travel across the world of the Legend of Korra so I might possibly put this episode maybe in second position in Amazing. At episode 5 we have Enemy at the Gates and this is when Kavira brings her entire army to the doorstep of Zafu, which is Su Yin Beifong, sort of a kingdom and 
Bolin and Varric begin to have second thoughts about their roles in Kavira's army because I believe they're actually experimenting with some of the roots from the vines they found in like the sort of a spirit sort of parts of Republic City or even like this sort of a spirit part around the world of the Legend of Korra and they actually found that if you I think if, if you sort of mess around with it enough you can actually make it explode with like, this really big explosion of sort of a pinkish purple color and they really didn't want that to go into Kav Kavira's hand so I thought it was definitely pretty interesting with that and like they did try one run away and like they did try to do a battle in like the mechs i think they might have built them but i'm not 100 percent sure so it's definitely really cool to actually see bowling and very sort of split from kavira instead of just like sticking with her for like the whole thing so for that i might possibly put it maybe in hmm, maybe third position in amazing next we have the battle of zafu and this is when Korra returns to her role as the avatar and Bolin and Varric break from Kavira's army. So I thought it was definitely something pretty sort of powerful and big for Korra to actually battle Kavira. After everything what had happened to her, she hadn't fully recovered because she actually did see Kavira sort of turn into her sort of um, the Venom of the Red Lotus self with like the Avatar state. So it was definitely really powerful to actually see that happen because like, she was willing to sacrifice herself after everything what had happened to her, and she hadn't fully recovered, but she was still willing to battle Kavira, so I thought that was definitely something pretty powerful, and she gave it her best shot, like she did some air bending, she earth bend, but she had to go into the Avatar state to actually, I wouldn't say finish off, but like severely maybe hurt Kavira, so it was definitely something pretty cool there. So for that, I might possibly put it in perfect, because... Even though that Korra wasn't in the perfect sort of state to battle Kavira, she still wanted to sacrifice herself and give it her best shot, which I thought was definitely really nice. At episode 7, we have Reunion, and this is when Korra returns to Republic City for real this time. And this is when she actually gets reunited with Marco and Asami. So it was really nice to actually see that, because we learn, which I think it was in a previous episode, previous episode but Korra learns for the first time that Marco is actually the bodyguard of Prince Wu and I think Asami we learned that she's like the sort of head chief of her dad's company so it's definitely really cool to actually see Korra's reaction with that and it was definitely great to see Marco and Asami's reaction as well and after three years this is when Team Avatar which is only Marco and Asami because Bolin and Varric are on their own sort of journey and they actually have to rescue Prince Wu because he actually goes missing so it's definitely really cool to see that and then Bolin and Varric are still on their journey because they, they have to get to Republic City to actually warn Team Avatar and like Tenzin about the sort of super weapon Kavira does have so I might possibly put it maybe in second position yeah I think second position at number 8, we have Remembrance, and this is a look back at Team Avatar's journey, because Varric tells it the story about the greatest move ever made, and then Marco explains the story as well about Team Avatar's journey to Prince Wu, so it was really cool how we actually got to see two perspectives of, like, the Team Avatar's journey, so I thought it was definitely great how we got to see flashbacks of it. So, it was really interesting to actually hear it from Beric because he sort of overreacted with it. He made up some parts, so I thought it was definitely pretty funny with that because it's definitely something Beric would do. But then, Marco, on the other hand, he was, like, really serious about it. He explained pretty much his relationship life and all that. So, it was definitely pretty serious with that. And, like, as they were doing this, um, Marco was actually sort of training up Prince Wu because like he was a sort of a scrawny person he wanted to train him up so like then Bolt I mean Marco didn't have to be like beside him every sort of 24 7 a day so it's definitely interesting with that but then Varric and Bolin they're actually on this I wouldn't say ship but like a small boat and they're actually explaining it to a group of people so it's definitely cool with that so for that I might possibly put it maybe in maybe fourth position in amazing Next we have Beyond the Wilds, and this is when the Spirit Vines in Republic City 
begin to sort of go crazy and they actually begin to abduct people. So it's very interesting to see that. It just shows that even like spirit vines have a mind of their own. Instead of just like being say like vines or don't do anything. They actually have a sort of mind of their own. So I thought it was definitely great with that. And then Cora has to actually figure out why they're doing it. And then she actually goes into the spirit world for the first time in three years. And she actually has a very short conversation with Rather, who is the light spirit inside of every avatar. And she actually goes into the avatar state for the first time in three years. Because the last time she went into the avatar state was actually when she had the mercury poison in her in season 3. So something pretty serious to actually go back into the avatar state after that incident. But she actually did free everybody. I think there was like maybe like 8 people in there including Janora and then another airbender. I can't actually remember his name. And then like possibly the airbender who I've forgotten his name's mum was in there. So it's definitely cool to actually see Korra go back to the spirit world for the first time in 3 years. So I might possibly put it maybe in second last position. Hmm, maybe maybe last position in Amazing. Next up, at episode 10, we have Operation Bay Fong. And this is a sort of a side quest because only out of Team Avatar, only Bolin actually went on this with Opal and Lin to actually save the other Bay Fongs who were Su Yin's children apart from Opal because I think the others were like sort of locked up so there's definitely really cool to actually see a sort of different episode where like not all team avatar were in it like it was just dedicated to like the Bay Fongs and then Korra visits the spirit world in search of help and I'm pretty sure she goes to Zaheer to actually get back into the spirit world but I'm not a hundred percent sure but I really did enjoy this episode and it was great to actually see Toph once again because we only got to see her in Korra alone and that was definitely quite the surprise and then to actually see her again and like at her age actually sort of confront con confront Kavira was definitely something pretty cool so for that I might possibly put it maybe in second position hmm maybe maybe fourth position now maybe fifth position yeah I think that's a good one maybe fifth position in Amazing, and then we have Kavira's game bit. I'm pretty good bit. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. And this is when Korra and Team Avatar, Team Avatar, Team Avatar try to stop Kavira from moving against Republic City. And then we learn that Kavira un like ravels her deadly weapon on this sort of giant mech thing, and the weapon is actually attached to the giant mech thing, and that was what. Bolin and Varric are actually working on, but then they destroyed it because they didn't want Kavira to actually get her hands on such power. So I really did like that, and Kavira has this sort of a very short conversation with Bratar Jr., like saying, after we conquer, like, um, Republic City, then we'll go on, like, a honeymoon. So it's definitely something pretty interesting in such, like, a series episode, but I thought it was a nice twist to it. So I might possibly put it Maybe in, maybe second last position in per, well not perfect, amazing, yeah I think that's a good position. Then we have Day of the Colossus and this was quite the episode, this is when Team Avatar clashes with Kavira on the streets of Republic City. Pema and Prince Wu try help the innocent civilians evacuate Republic City because like with such a giant mech you can very easily like destroy buildings with it so they wanted to get as many people out so I really liked how it cut in between these two parts we had Team Avatar with like Su Yin well just the Bay Fongs in general and then like we had Tenz and his children the other airbenders and then they were battling the giant sort of colossus and then it cut to Pema and Prince Wu evacuating the innocent civilians so I really did like how they like sort of cut between them and I feel like they did it pretty good because like we had one section go for one time and then another one so I think they very equally split it into some really nice parts so for that I might possibly put it maybe in first position and finally at episode 13 we have Day of the Colossus The Last Stand and this was quite the final episode for The Legend of Korra put it up into maybe first position, hmm, maybe second position in perfect because 
the whole battle between them was definitely really enjoyable against Kavira, Korra, because they actually come face to face inside of the giant colossus in like the head part. So I really did enjoy the battle because there really wasn't too much room to actually move around in and sort of dodge, but it was definitely a really enjoyable battle. And then the fate of the Earth Kingdom and the Avatar's life are at stake because the battle inside of the Colossus actually sort of turned a bit once, I think it was Lu, Lu, Lin and Su Yin actually destroy like the mechanism inside of the giant Colossus so it made it explode but then resulting in that was also actually destroying the sort of root part inside of the giant Colossus where like the sort of vines of the roots came out from the gun so it's definitely really interesting to see that because they had this whole plan to actually get inside of the giant mecha because they couldn't actually destroy it from the outside like earth bending, earth bending couldn't do it like no air bending not even metal bending could like open up these sort of giant colossus so they actually had to cut in with like these sort of gi not giant but sort of like hum hummingbirds so it was really cool to actually see that and then Asami's dad actually made quite the sacrifice I think his name is Hiroshi Sato, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. He made a sacrifice, sacrificing his own life to cut the hole in it so then, like, Team Avatar could get inside of it. It wasn't as good as Zuko's redemption arc, but it was still a pretty interesting redemption arc, seeing him sacrifice himself to actually help Team Avatar, so I really did enjoy that, but it was definitely quite the sad moment. So after they sort of destroyed the root inside of the giant sort of colossus and like destroy like the mechanism it actually exploded and sent I think Kavira flying into sort of these spirit vines in like a Republic City and then I think Korra just like followed her because I didn't think she got too much damage done to her and then inside of like the sort of forest of these spirit vines the gun is actually still there so Kavira begins to actually use it on Korra but it begins to go out of control like I think it's he begins just shooting everywhere, and then it then has Kavira on the ground, and it's about to come to her, but then Korra comes, and she begins to, like, I'm not even sure, like, energy bend? I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It was so awesome, with, like, the music, and just seeing her sacrifice herself for Kavira, who, like, tried to kill her, who tried to conquer, like, the whole of the world of the Legend of Korra, like, she tried to conquer pretty much Republic City, she, like, hurt, like, I wouldn't hurt, but she put, like, innocent lives at stake, and to actually see Korra, like, protect Kavira was something pretty interesting, and I did not expect that to actually happen, and then the music was definitely great, and then something really shocking happened, she actually created a new portal to the spirit world, I thought that was definitely great, and to actually see, like, Team Avatar's reaction, and then, like, seeing Tenzin's reaction, Janora's, it was so awesome to actually see the reaction. They just, like, they sounded really surprised and shocked. They just didn't go, like, uh, it's a new spirit portal. They were, like, genuinely excited and shocked about a new spirit portal. And then the end was also something pretty shocking because I think her name is Julie or, like, Z Zulie. It's spelled, like, with a Z, but I think it's pronounced Julie. And then Varric actually got married, which I thought was definitely quite surprising because, like, Julie, she's just been treated like dirt for like, I wouldn't say her whole life, but like, just working for Varric, she was treated like dirt, like, basically, she had to do everything for Varric, and it was really interesting to actually see her marry Varric, but I really did like the whole sort of wedding part of it, how we had like Team Avatar dressed up in nice clothes, and then the part where Tenzin and Korra were just like, sitting there and talking, I thought that was definitely great, because Korra says something which I think is, like, I had to go through all this so then I could, like, truly suffer. I'm pretty sure that's what it was, but it may be something a little different. And I thought it was such a great quote. But then the ending, that was something great, or no, not great, perfect, where we had Asami and Korra basically walk into sort of the spirit portal holding hands. And I thought it was such a perfect ending. And then they sort of turn to one another, like, facing one another, and then it sort of, sort of goes up and then says the end. It was such a perfect ending, and I definitely do ship Korra and Asami. I think they are definitely a great couple, well, a perfect couple. 
So, hope you guys did enjoy this video as much as I did making it, and also this series, because Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra were some of my favourite tier lists to actually do, and I really did enjoy sharing my thoughts and opinions. So, hope you guys did enjoy this series on Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra, because with all the support you guys have given, given me in all those videos, it really really made me create more of these so thank you guys so much for that because these videos definitely do take quite a while to make and it was definitely worth it as they say all good things have to come to an end and i definitely agree with that because this was such a really enjoyable series to make and i hope you guys did enjoy watching this series so next week's episode and then episodes after that on tier listing making will be different and this topic was actually suggested by one of my many amazing viewers so definitely stay tuned for that. So as always guys, hope you guys did enjoy this video and I can see you soon. Goodbye!